SpongeBob's Truth or Square, the television movie special during the sixth season of SpongeBob that had SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs reminiscing on their old memories while being stuck in a freezer during the 117th Krusty Krab anniversary. This special... man, it's not good. Despite it being the 10-year celebration for SpongeBob, it aired four months after the debut date, the events that characters called back to were completely random and made up, and about half of the entire special was filled with Patchy the Pirate segments with celebrity cameos. What a great way to celebrate 10 years of a cartoon that got such high praises, and to think the upcoming milestone is going to be 30 years. I'm going to feel so old when that happens. Anyways, a game had to be made for it too. Except that's not fully what happened when it came to its development. As you guys most likely know already, Heavy Iron Studios made Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game, which were both met with gargantuan success as far as license-based games go. However, they wouldn't get to make another SpongeBob game until much later, with that title being SpongeBob Happiness Squared, set to release for the 10-year anniversary. Then Nickelodeon forced them to take what they were already working on and rework it into being based off of Truth or Square and slap its name on it. Nickelodeon did then what it does today, Screw over its game developers. Seriously, some of the stuff they did to All-Star Brawl is downright despicable. Today, I'll be looking at the SpongeBob Truth or Square video game and see if it's at least better than its TV special counterpart. SpongeBob is having the 11th-7th anniversary party for the Krusty Krab at his house, and during the preparations, Mr. Krabs gets SpongeBob the Krabby Patty secret formula to hide it. Wait, why doesn't he just hide it himself? Hours later, SpongeBob forgets where he put the secret formula and gets sad, and apparently him getting sad makes him forget everything. Not entirely sure how that works, but whatever. Plankton overhears this and offers as a friend to help SpongeBob remember where the formula is by injecting shrunken robots into his brain. Obviously, he's doing this for his own nefarious reasons, but he accidentally drops a remote that would activate the robots properly. So instead, he himself goes into SpongeBob's brain to find the formula. Throughout the game, the gang tries to help SpongeBob remember where he put the formula by revisiting his past memories to increase his happiness. After some time and numerous trips down memory lane, SpongeBob remembers where the formula is. Tell me where he is. He's in a safe place. Plankton goes to try and steal it, but Spongebob does manage to stop him and his giant mech from even reaching the Krusty Krab. Which, I don't know how that would happen when it's right down the street. Ignoring that, Spongebob and Mr. Krabs goes to check on the safe and the formula is not in there. Turns out, Spongebob had it in his back pocket the whole time, except that was actually a lottery ticket Mr. Krabs accidentally gave him, and he had the formula in his back pocket the entire time. All that stress on everyone, but the vantage here. Honestly, I'm surprised Spongebob did not blow up at Mr. Krabs for this. Barring the really dumb ending, this game story is actually pretty good. And I say good in comparison to the special story. This game doesn't follow the special story for the most part, which kinda had to happen. They were just in vents the whole time, and I am not stooping low enough to make that joke. And instead of a bunch of completely made up stuff, you go through levels based on actual episodes of the show. Most of them being pretty iconic too, such as when Spongebob and Sandy first met, when Spongebob and Patrick stage a fight at the Salty Splatoon, when Spongebob first got hired as a fry cook, and plenty more. They aren't one to one, but this does make sense in a way since Plankton was tampering with Spongebob's brain. That would heavily explain why the Christmas episode where Squidward dresses up as Santa Claus takes place entirely in a freezer, why Spongebob ends up at rock bottom while taking the trash out during a 24 hour shift, and obviously all the robots everywhere. This game did a better job at executing the idea of Truth or Square's story than Truth or Square itself, and it barely follows it. That should probably tell you how bad the special was. This game might be the best looking out of the Heavy Iron Studio trilogy. This game takes the best part of the previous games and expands on them while also increasing the quality of other aspects you wouldn't even think about. 
In the movie game and Battle for Bikini Bottom, characters have the same static facial animations when talking for tech scenes, whether they be screaming, scared, happy, what have you. Not here though. All of the cutscenes, including the tech scenes, are properly lip synced and uniquely animated to give a more highly expressive and consistent visual style throughout the entire game. It's honestly surprising how much effort they put in for the tech scenes since they were almost never like this before, and it really pays off. I wouldn't be surprised if this game was used as some inspiration for Rehydrated. As far as referencing material, it is everywhere. As a celebration and look back at Spongebob's history, this should be the case. Various pictures around Spongebob's house depict specific frames from particular episodes, some characters and areas and levels are references, even the file profiles use different frames from episodes depending on how far in the game you are. The loading screens also have trivia questions about certain aspects of particular episodes or general stuff about characters, and as far as I'm aware, none of the answers that are deemed correct by the game are wrong. The attention to detail is insane when it comes to this game. I didn't even notice some stuff until I looked at other people's videos on this game and they pointed it out. There's stuff everywhere. The voice acting is also top notch. Most of the cast is the same as the shows, and they do just as good jobs here as they always do. Mr. Krabs doesn't have the same voice actor, but the only time that happened during the Heavy Iron trilogy was the movie game. In his place is Bob Joles, who does a better job as Mr. Krabs than Joe White did in Battle for Bikini Bottom in my opinion. The most shocking thing though is that Mermaid Man was voiced by Ernest Borgnine, the original voice actor for him. That did not happen often for Spongebob video games, and it was one of the last times he voiced Mermaid Man before he passed. Rest in peace, both to him and Tim Conway, the voice of Barnacle Boy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the only Spongebob game that has music from the show itself. Not even like a rendition or a subtle nod to the songs like Creature from the Krusty Krab did, but the actual songs themselves, like 12th Street Rag and Grass Skirt Chase. However, that's only 5 out of 20 songs. The other 15 are reused from either Battle for Bikini Bottom or the movie game. And these are also not remixes either, which actually would have been pretty cool. The title song is just part of the block challenge song from the movie game, and Sandy's power-up song is the title song from the movie game, but sped up. Maybe we could treat using the other game's music as a reference to those games considering that Truth or Square is all about memory lane and the fact that Prawn has a cameo and he's only been in Battle for Bikini Bottom outside of this, but still, that's a stretch on my end and it's very noticeable that no new music was made for this game. As Spongebob, you need to jump along platforms and defeat enemies to work your way to the end of levels and obtain a happiness item, which is one of the various iconic objects you've seen from the show. At your disposal are three attacks. The standard attacks are a slam and a spin, both of which can be used for causing damage to enemies and activating buttons or turning gears. Another attack requires you to collect water balloons so you can transform Spongebob into a cannon and shoot them. This again is able to do damage to enemies as well as press certain switches. Two environmental objects you can interact with are tubs with water and gum wads. Touching the water tubs causes Spongebob to absorb water. Though it gets rid of your double jump, you can spray water at sponges on the ground to make them larger, essentially making them platforms, and you can shoot them at water wheels to make them turn, which kinda does a variety of things depending on where it's located. When inside of a gum wad, you can aim and shoot yourself forward, whether that be into a tiki slash enemy, or to get across a large gap by going into multiple wads and jumping out of them. Throughout levels are power-ups you can pick up. One of them makes Spongebob buff and lasts until you take damage. While buffed, his attacks are bigger, do more damage, and can be used to destroy stone tikis and activate larger switches that he couldn't otherwise. There's also one that makes Spongebob invincible, but it's pretty rare to see this. The last one transforms Spongebob into an object and lets you temporarily play as one of Spongebob's friends. Patrick's power-up has him constantly slamming a Spongebob mallet in front of him. Sandy, along with Spongebob Karate Gloves, creates a movable tornado while spinning. Lastly, Spongebob turns into a clarinet for Squidward and he shoots out explosives. Scattered around levels are happiness nuggets. These can also be collected by defeating enemies and breaking tikis. Happiness nuggets can be used in Spongebob's pineapple to increase your health, purchase costumes, and unlock furniture upgrades. There's also a sleeping Patrick in every level that you can find. If you have a second player, they can play as Plankton. He plays more of a secondary role with the ability to hold enemies in place and or shake them. 
He also has other actions that require collectible ammo, which is gotten by converting happiness nuggets and sometimes drop from defeated enemies. I don't think these have an actual name, so I will be dubbing them as Misery Nuggets. The other moves he has lets him zap or stun enemies, which again require the Misery Nuggets to use. Upon completing a level, you'll unlock that level's teleport boxes and Tiki challenges. The power-ups are pretty fun to use. They end up being nice changes of pace to the rest of the game, especially for times where you can defeat a ton of enemies or tikis at once while using them. It's rather chaotic in a good way that none of the previous Heavy Iron Studio games really had. I will admit that Squiver's power-up is a little bit on the awkward side to aim sometimes, but aside from that, they were nice to use. Something different, but still enjoyable. Now it's time to talk about how quickly this game loses its appeal anywhere else. Most of the content is very grindy and very samey. The game as a whole gets super repetitive after a while since the main way of spicing up gameplay and difficulty is having a bunch more of the same enemies around with more health than earlier in the game. There's not a large variety of enemies to at least make you avoid them differently. It's not helped by the fact that what you have at the very start of the game is almost the same until the very end of it. Yeah, there are the power-ups, but them being in the same spots just means the same exact sequences almost every time. Post-game content is pretty much the same task over and over. The challenges are only collecting coins, surviving against enemies, or breaking objects until time runs out. In comparison to the extra stuff you can do in Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game, these are not enough. I would very much rather take the extra driving and sliding missions than this. There's not even power-ups involved to create some differences between them, especially the survival ones. It doesn't help that you have to beat the level first to even access them. You at least have to teleport boxes to get to them faster, but most of the time it's not required that you use some ability you don't have yet to get to them, because again, you don't unlock that many. Not to mention that there's also Sleeping Patricks in each level that you can get normally, so that only points out how playtime for this stuff is unnecessarily added. The only other thing you can do is gather happiness nuggets which give yourself health upgrades, costumes, or better quality furniture in Spongebob's Pineapple. While the costumes are worthwhile, the game is very generous with health to the point where I feel only one upgrade is needed. There were plenty of times where I just ran forward because I knew there'd be more than enough extra health for me. The furniture changes only apply to the house, which will only matter if you stay there for an overly extended period of time. Unfortunately, this is where the most amount of nuggets are spent because there's so much upgradable stuff and it all costs so much. The grindy nature is made even more apparent when interacting with objects around the house because it gives you additional nuggets, but it's not nearly enough to really help out. It genuinely feels like a mobile game based around microtransactions sometimes. Long story short, this game desperately tries to not be boring and fails miserably. The camera is awfully finicky at times. It's pretty rare, but in some areas when rotating the camera, it'll either not turn or it jerks a little bit, kind of repeating the rotation. I think it has to do with the way it interacts with the walls as well as how some terrain is shaped since the places this usually happens in has some form of physical barrier that you can touch. For wide open areas this isn't a problem, so that's what keeps this from being in the bad section. Plankton's gameplay can be a bit frustrating. Collecting ammo is actually kinda difficult because you have to convert the nugget before collecting it, and the reticle isn't gonna move very fast to make converting some of them easy. You'd be surprised how hard this is. Also, Plankton doesn't really do that much damage. I suppose this is because Plankton is mainly for delaying enemy assaults rather than outright defeating them for Spongebob, but still, if you pay enough attention to that, you will be left wondering, why did I even bother playing when I barely contribute to anything? Also, in case it's not obvious, the conversion just makes the collection of happiness nuggets slower. Not terribly slower, but slower. And it doesn't need to be any slower. Despite the colorful packaging and doing what the original source did better, it still doesn't save it from being boring after a short while due to so little diversity in gameplay and content. 
If this game was how it was meant to be originally without Truth of Square getting injected into it, aka if this was Happiness Squared, it's possible that it would have been a better game. I mean, the other two Spongebob games Heavy Iron Studios made are known as the two best Spongebob games in the series, so them having an amazing trilogy almost seems like an obvious conclusion. I believe that if they had more time, they could have fleshed out the gameplay to have a lot more variety. I don't even blame Heavy Iron Studios for some of the stuff they had to do either. You can tell they cared with how much effort they put towards the art style and animation, but having to reuse music from previous games and the least creative post-game content possible? I imagine that's because of Nickelodeon pulling the strings and making Heavy Iron Studios suddenly shift gears on what the game was for. They were kinda doomed the moment Truth or Square was brought up. And sadly, I don't think Heavy Iron Studios will ever get another chance at Spongebob games. Not to say I'm not excited about the new Spongebob game whenever that comes out, but seeing that Heavy Iron Studios recently helped to co-develop Call of Duty and Marvel Avengers doesn't exactly sit well with me. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Yay, another Spongebob game that's like, average or worse. I'm really starting to regret doing Battle for Bikini Bottom in the movie game first because I knew after that point that it was going to be bad, but my goodness, this game is pretty bad and it's not even like the worst one. And even worse off, I played this one when I was younger along with the movie game and Battle for Bikini Bottom and I enjoyed it just as much as those two, and now I don't. <laughs> But anyways, if you have not already, make sure you go down to the description below because that's where all of my social media are located. My Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord are all in the description and they are all ways for you guys to be notified of whenever I have another update for the channel or have another video uploaded. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more as well as share this video out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.